Good morning from Bodrum. We didn't film yesterday because it was simply a travel day between Selchuk and Bodrum, and we thought it was going to be boring. Well, guess what? Our bus was canceled again, and again, they didn't send me an email or a text notification, and so we had to go to the bus station, which again, not a big deal because it was literally three minutes away from our hotel in Selchuk, and we had to rebook with them in person. Now, in the end, it was actually better because we got an earlier bus, which meant that we arrived here in Bodrum like four hours earlier than originally intended, which was nice because our bus was supposed to arrive at 1130 at night, but instead we got here more like 730. And also we ended up getting a direct bus instead of one where we had to change. So it worked out better in that sense and we got a refund but just another part of travel that people don't often talk about is that apparently buses get cancelled quite frequently so you need to be flexible and changing your plans. However you say direct it wasn't quite direct though so it turns out that the actual major bus station for Bodrum is about a 15 minute drive outside of the city. What they actually end up doing if you want to get into actual Bodrum, the city itself, is to get a mini bus. We had no idea, but thankfully there was a very helpful guy called Andre who took it upon himself to help us out, directed us there. Thankfully it was only about two, 50 Canadian for the two of us to get into town. Yeah, it was 20 Turkish lira total. Exactly, which was lovely. But honestly, had we not known, had we not had him to help us out, I think we'd have still potentially have been stuck in that bus station. So Yeah, or we would have taken a more expensive taxi and there's no point to that. Exactly. So definitely do remember if you are going to be taking a bus into Bodrum, you may end up needing to take an additional mini bus to get into the actual city itself. Today, I think we're just going to go explore some ancient ruins Mm -hmm. and then maybe go to the beach because the weather, I hope, cross fingers, is nice. Cannot wait. It is glorious outside it's going to be nice and toasty and ah even looking at the city yesterday as we came in it looked great so can't wait to explore we haven't made it too far from our hotel since we left this morning but we came across a really cute cafe that it seemed like a lot of locals were sitting at and we decided to order a Turkish coffee. Oh my goodness, it was so delicious. Turkish coffee is kind of like thicker and they leave the very finely ground coffee beans at the bottom so you don't end up actually drinking the entire cup, but it's mixed with a bunch of spices like cardamom and some others that I can't really pronounce. And it's just so flavorful and feels like it's giving you a warm hug on a fall day. So that was really lovely. And we've just been walking along the harbor right now. And one of the things that I'm noticing is how much this place reminds me of Greece, which I guess kind of makes sense considering the fact that it was ruled by the Greeks for a while. We've just picked up the breakfast of champions, pear, apple, banana, two nut bars, and we had these peanuts left over. I think it cost like 34 lira, which is about $2.50 Canadian. decided to come to Bodrum as part of our Turkish itinerary. The first is it's coastal and the beaches apparently are amazing. The second is that apparently there is also a castle that was built by Crusader Knights, so that's kind of cool. But the final reason is because there is also an ancient city that used to be here. So 
What I'm currently standing in is Mindos Gate, which is the last remaining remnant of the ancient city walls of the city of Halicarnassus. This area was populated between the 12th and 15th centuries BC, but in terms of coming to the height of its powers, then that really wasn't until about the 4th century BC in the time of King Morsolos. In that time, he didn't just build another building that we're going to talk about in a bit, but also he built city walls and ramparts and this gate, as well as several other gates, which would then not be conquered until the time of Alexander the Great in 333 BC. Before that point though, this was part of the Persian Empire that ruled a lot of the world at that time. that in right now as I'm sure you probably guessed is a theatre so this was Halicarnassus theatre which back in its heyday was about 10,000 people strong and it is quite considerable what they have uncovered up to now is just the first level but actually it would have gone up basically double this and back up because with what has been uncovered, this would see about 4,000 people. So obviously there's a lot more to see back there. The shaded area you see here is everything that's been excavated. But the rest of this is how large it actually was. And also, another thing that I didn't quite realize when it came to these theaters, curved seats. How oh, nice. Another awesome thing which we haven't seen in pretty much every other archaeological site that we've gone to so far is the gate this free. It turns out that the mausoleum is not free. It's 50 Turkish Lira per ticket, which is about $3.50 Canadian, so not too bad. So we are currently standing in what was known back then as the Tomb of Morsolus. It eventually became known as the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus, which is another of the seven ancient wonders of the world. If you didn't see the video that we took in Ephesus, there are seven of them. Two are here in Turkey, this is the second. There are two in Egypt, two in Greece, and one in Iraq, which unfortunately due to politics and things I don't think we'll ever visit, but hopefully we'll get to see some of the rest of them during our travels. This structure was a tomb to the king Morsolus of Halicarnassus who was very highly revered. He built a lot of the structures that we've already seen, including the city gates and the city walls that then helped to defend them against the likes of Alexander the Great's armies for quite some time. Upon his death, then they decided to erect this particular tomb. And pretty much all of this back in the day would have been below ground. So, this would have been the burial chamber just here, but literally everything else on top of that was just a brick structure. So imagine 45 meters worth of brick upon brick upon brick upon brick, and then add some columns, about 400 different statues, and then you start to understand the grandeur of this place. This was so big that everybody understood just how magnificent this was because that list of seven ancient wonders of the world was made back in Roman times, I believe. So, with that, then it's just, again, another awesome thing to be here. It was because of the king's name, Morsolus, that actually this ended up being called the Mausoleum. And Mausoleum, even to this day, is the definition of an above-ground tomb. So clearly, the impact of this building has spanned millennia. When was this building built? 
Was it like? Between the third and fourth century BC. Right. It would have been still standing had it not been for a series of different earthquakes between the 12th and 15th century AD. So it had had a pretty good run up until that point, but obviously nature's kind of powerful. So that's what ended up putting pay to this. It's about one o'clock and we just got back to our hotel after a morning of sightseeing. But we are now going to go enjoy the beach and we're going to take the GoPro. So if the footage looks different or it's really bad because I don't know how to use it, that's why. We don't go for a frame. We have nothing to check with on this GoPro. Yep, fingers crossed. We are at Bodrum Beach and we had a little picnic for lunch. And then we've just been tanning and I've been listening to an amazing book on Audible. It is a love story and it takes place in Toronto and Barry's Bay. So I really loved it. I just finished it. I don't know what it's called or who the author is, but I'll figure it out. We can link it below. Meanwhile, I'm not generally a big podcast person. I tend to kind of switch off after a little bit of time if it's just somebody talking at me. But I've made one exception. I am a big fan of the show Scrubs, and there is a rewatch podcast by Sam Crafter and Donald Faison, which is the Take Losses Real Friends podcast. And it is awesome. I'm about halfway through all the episodes of the so far, and I'm still loving it. So, yeah, that's definitely my recommendation. But it's getting pretty hot, so we're gonna go in the water, go for a swim. Woohoo! Let's hope the water's not too cold. Let's go, let's go. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> say day one in Bodrum has been just lovely. Yeah, it was kind of my perfect type of day in the sense that we did some sightseeing in the morning and then just had a really chill afternoon at the beach. So if every day could be like this, that would make me super happy. Me too. And to be honest, actually with tomorrow, then we're planning on doing more or less the same thing, but just seeing different stuff. Exactly. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling. City walls and ramparts, and this gate, as well as several. <clears throat> as well as every, yeah. You look sexy AS sitting there, and you're good to go. Even sweating? Yeah. Because I am sweating. Yeah, but you look hot. Appreciate that. I mean, well, physically hot? Yes. Um, I do feel physically hot. Yes. Rather than, like, That's yeah. what I meant. Okay, appreciate that. Thanks, babe. It then became known eventually as the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus. Uh.